These are holding tanks. They're upside down. And this is a transport tank. Once fish have been harvested from the ponds, they're put in these transport tanks to be transported back to be processed and graded. In these transport tanks, we'll put 50 to 100 litres of water. This tank holds 290 litres when full, so I roughly quarter fill whatever tank I'm using. Don't overfill the tank because the fish will bring the tank to full as they're put in. And in that 100 litres of water, we'll put about 200 pound weight of fish. And when we're transporting fish in those densities, the fish need to be supplemented with neat oxygen supplied through an oxygen diffuser during transport back to the holding tanks. And I'll have about a thousand litres of water in these holding tanks and I'll put about 200 to 250 pound weight of fish in the thousand litres of water that's in these tanks. Whilst they're in the tanks, they'll be fed air through an air diffuser. These round tanks are fiberglass, therefore very easy to repair with a smooth finish to prevent fish from damaging themselves. These particular tanks will happily hold two and a half thousand litres, but it's a mistake to overfill holding tanks, because after a few minutes the fish will begin to jump. Without enough water depth, the fish don't even attempt to jump, which stops them from causing damage to themselves or potentially escaping the tank. I don't like to keep them in these tanks at these densities for any longer than a week, but if I do, then I'll treat the tanks with salt. Salt reduces the toxic effects of ammonia. It can also help to remove external parasites and treat any physical damage that the fish may have picked up during their harvest. I'm Ben and this is the BP Milling YouTube channel. I make fish feeds and fishery management content, both of which I create to improve your fisheries. Hit subscribe to support this channel and broaden your understanding of fishery science. Enjoy the video. I've always used leaky pipe style diffusers to aerate the holding tanks. The air blower is a diaphragm blower which supplies 100 litres of air per minute. This is supplied to a manifold where I can control the feed to two of my holding tanks. Therefore each holding tank gets 50 litres of air per minute. It does pay to have good air diffusers for optimum efficiency. Lots of small bubbles is far more efficient than huge plumes of air producing huge turbulent plumes of bubbles, but I'll explain all that later. I've always used a large fiberglass tank to transport my fish. This one was once a water storage tank that I found in a neighbouring farm scrap heap. A few pints and it was mine. I cut the top off and reinforced it with a wooden frame and then cut some marine ply to screw down to the frame and made myself a lid. I then cut a hole ready to fiberglass a Volterra valve in the bottom and then I had a fully functioning fiberglass transport tank. And in that tank I can transport a thousand pound weight of fish. It's a bloody heavy unit when it's full though. When transporting large volumes of fish with this tank, I'm concerned that the oxygen isn't well dispersed throughout. If I need to move a thousand pound of fish with this tank, I'll usually run an air diffuser alongside the oxygen diffuser, which really helps to combat that and mix it around the tank. With these concerns and a bloody mess made dragging this lump of a tank up and down the wet valley to my ponds, this year I invested in a much smaller, purpose-built Lynn transport tank from Air Water Fish. They're made from a heavy-duty plastic and are designed to be completely smooth internally for moving fish. They're also designed in a shape to minimise water slopping around during transit. This smaller, lighter tank means that an oxygen diffuser will efficiently supply the whole tank without any risk of dead spots not receiving enough oxygen. It's also far lighter than my big old clumsy loft water storage tank, so I can drag it behind the quad without churning up the field. £200 to £250 pound in this tank will look cramped, but that's what we want to stop the fish from slopping around and stressing. They're compact tightly in this tank for less than 20 minutes to get them back to be graded into the awaiting holding tanks.
When transporting fish in an isolated tank at these densities, they need to be fed oxygen via an oxygen diffuser. An oxygen diffuser produces micro bubbles. These micro bubbles are produced by forcing oxygen at pressure through a ceramic stone which is fixed inside a metal housing. Note that this is an oxygen diffuser, not an air diffuser. Why micro bubbles? There are two key points that make micro bubbles far more efficient in diffusing oxygen into the water. Firstly, the micro bubbles produced by the ceramic stone are obviously less buoyant than a large bubble, so they spend a longer time suspended in the water before they surface. Because once those oxygen bubbles reach the surface, they're of no use. So we need to get the most out of that gas by keeping it in the water, allowing it to diffuse efficiently into the water to become dissolved oxygen. Micro bubbles get wafted around the tank for quite some time before finding their way to atmosphere. In comparison to a bubble the size of a golf ball which will barge its way to the surface in seconds. And then the second point is surface area. One litre of micro bubbles collectively have a surface area far greater than a litre of golf ball sized bubbles. The greater the surface area, the more contact the oxygen has with the water and the greater the efficiency of diffusion. We see lots of fisheries that think, oh, you put oxygen through a uh, transport tank, they'll chuck something like that in and they'll think, job done. But I'll show you why we don't put oxygen through an air diffuser. I've set the pressure on the regulator to 50 psi as suggested on the flow meter to deliver one litre of oxygen per minute, which is a suggested rate for transporting 100 kilos of carp in 10 degrees of water. With both diffusers set to the same flow rate, notice how much bigger the bubbles are coming from the air diffuser on the left and how quickly they're reaching the surface, blowing to atmosphere before the oxygen can dissolve into water. And compare that to the micro bubble oxygen on the right, where thousands of tiny bubbles are wafting around the tank those tiny bubbles remain suspended for far longer, therefore dissolve into the water far, far more efficiently. The other option from air water fish is this oxygen diffuser frame made from stainless steel. They're designed to fit in their LIN transport tanks to supply oxygen evenly throughout the tank via these EDPM oxygen diffuser tubes. When transporting fish on the road for any length of time, I'll give the fish more room than this so that they can tell me whether or not there's a problem. If the oxygen feed isn't enough or maybe a pipe has unknowingly split and flow to the oxygen diffuser has stopped, these fish are valuable so we need to know as soon as possible. When stopping to check the fish on the way to a delivery, you want to see how they're behaving without influence from a careless lid opening. We want to check that the fish are low in the water and not gasping at the surface. But if you're too tightly compact in the tank, then it's much harder for the fish to indicate an oxygen shortage. And if you spook the fish, then you can wrongly assume that they're happy. So on long journeys, it's important to allow the fish enough room so they can show you if there's a problem or if the oxygen needs to be increased and carefully check your transport tanks at regular intervals. Another useful tool is one of these aerators that will work off a power supply in your car or van. I sometimes use something like this if, I'm, if perhaps oxygen is a little bit overkill for the load of fish I've got on. Perhaps I'm taking a 30 fish sample for a health check. You don't really need oxygen for that many fish. So aeration is fine for that amount of fish. And this is where people get a bit of a misunderstanding when to use air, when to use oxygen. Air is made up of 21% oxygen. 78% of the atmospheric air is nitrogen. The remaining 1% being argon and other gases. With that small tank, if I had anything less than 50 pound weight, I think aeration would be fine. And those tanks are designed so the water doesn't slosh around, so I'd fill it right up, put your lid on, and then the depth of water is gonna allow longer time for those bubbles to be suspended. So aeration would be absolutely fine. You'd be surprised how much air these kick out. When I used to use that big transport tank, having a bit of air blowing through with the auction helps to circulate that auction through the big tank because that tank is very big, getting air and oxygen into all the corners, having that flow from a little air blower through an air diffuser just helps to mix all those layers of water and keep the fish well oxygenated right through the tank. It's really just a bit of a lifeline really, something useful, a tool to have in the van or in the car or in the truck, whatever you use. So I'm gonna switch the ignition on and show you just what this can kick out. 
main key point that all fishery managers and anglers must understand is this. Oxygen is far more soluble in colder water temperatures. The oxygen carrying capacity of water is also improved the colder the water. For example, water at 5 degrees at a 100% oxygen saturation point is carrying over 13 milligrams per litre of oxygen. Compare that to water at 20 degrees, which is at a 100% saturation point when it's carrying just 9 milligrams per litre of oxygen. And that's why it's safer to move fish in the winter, the colder the better. So the content of this video was more focused on carp. Don't assume that all species are equal because bream, rudd and roach, they're a lot more delicate again and they produce a lot more mucus. So in your transport tanks, particularly the warmer, the more amplified this problem is of the fish producing a lot more mucus. So particularly bream that produce a lot of mucus in a transport tank, that mucus is gonna cause those fish problems in diffusing oxygen into their gills. If you leave bream for too long or even roach and rudd in a, in a tub for too long, the water becomes quite gloopy with mucus because they're overproducing mucus because they're stressing. So those species particularly want colder waters. The colder the better for any species. Bear that in mind. It's not for everyone and I don't want this video to give my viewers confidence in moving fish. In fact, quite the opposite. I want you all to understand actually how specialist it is and how you need to know what you're doing so really it's just a bit of an insight into how we produce fish how we move them around i don't want anybody to get confidence in thinking oh this is how we do it we're going to start moving fish around because there's a lot of paperwork firstly you need a netting netting consent you can't go netting willy-nilly you need netting consent from the environment agency you need a health check to move fish from any source water that's going into an online water and those Two waters obviously need to have site permits as a reference numbers from the EA and you need to have consent from the EA to move those fish. And as a fish supplier, I need to keep records of what fish have gone from where to where with what health check. So everything needs to be health checked. We get health checks every single year from our fish at home. So you need to have those records to be fully transparent in your traceability of what fish have gone where with what health checks. So you're not moving category two parasites around the country. So please don't take this video as an educational video to encourage you to move fish. It's something that you should leave to the professionals. And lastly, I want to thank Air Water Fish for supporting me with this video with some of their products. They're the UK distributors of Lynn Transport Tanks, so check them out. I've actually been really impressed with the transport tank. For the scale that I'm producing fish, it's absolutely perfect. A lot smaller than what I was using, and it's designed for the job rather than my makeshift transport tank that I was using. I can now move fish around much easier with that smaller tank, and the other components that come with those transport tanks are all available from Airwater Fish. So go and check them out. Very helpful people there. Thank you very much again, and we'll catch you all on the next video.